What's up everyone, it's Dakota. Welcome back to another modern video and today we're going to be looking at a fan favorite of the format which is kind of crazy because I associate this as like being the villain in most uh, most matchups of the modern format. So today we're going to take a look at Boros Burn and why specifically now like I think it's actually in a pretty decent spot given all of the new cards we've obviously seen from like the ring set from the one ring to Bowmasters to uh, essentially all the other stuff that we kind of see creeping into the modern format as the metagame kind of shakes itself out and we figure out like what decks uh, that have shown up because of the Lord of the Rings cards are now going to be able to stick around, what cards are going to stick around, and you know what what to expect going forward into some tournaments as like the metagame starts to get uh, more and more solved as we go on. So. Uh, of course, before we get too deep into all of that, you know, what the deck entails and everything, I would appreciate it if you're not already subscribed to the channel that you subscribe and ring the notification bell so you know when videos like this, Pioneer videos and other essay type videos get posted. If you go into the link in the description down below, uh, I have the link to the deck list there if you want to check it out as I go over it or if you just want to be able to copy it, play it on Moto, things like that. I also have my Twitch channel linked as well you can go over there and throw me a follow i would really appreciate it and of course the discord server as well is down there just so talk about magic and things like that so boros burn uh it's not a stranger on my channel uh, i have you know played some matches with burn i have uh, talked about it in in length and uh, you know we we know why it's good and why it, it continues to be good you know as kind of like the metagame evolves and everything when people are playing omnaths and people are playing the one ring people are playing bone masters are playing yogmoth but they're playing all these powerful things and you know we're still playing with the card lightning bolt and lava spike and goblin guide you know instead of like ragavan you know it's crazy but uh, what the boros burn deck offers is a deck that when you get land screwed like you only draw one or two lands that's all the deck really needs, because even like its three mana cards and Riffle and Screw the Critics are secretly one mana cards, uh, paying a red and suspending one. So essentially, like on your next turn, you get to bullet your opponent, and Screw the Critics being one mana if your opponent was dealt damage this or you know has lost life this turn, you know, which usually results from us attacking, playing Lava Spike, so on. Really, what this deck offers you is that if your opponent stumbles at all. Uh, you can kill them, and even when your opponent doesn't stumble, you know, and they kind of get to do their thing, it's still very hard for them to win. And what this deck is doing now, uh, obviously, we've seen like the Elementals deck is becoming super popular. People are just playing Omnath in conjunction with the One Ring, so that you can draw a bunch of cards. You can have the Ring tick up, you know, to have four, five, six counters on it, and you know, you're gaining life with Omnath. So we have a card, Roiling Vortex, which Deals a damage to each uh, deals a damage to a player at the beginning of their upkeep. So like on my turn, Roiling Vortex would do damage to me. On your upkeep, Roiling Vortex would deal damage to you. Uh, the key, the two key lines of text in this, obviously with Roiling Vortex, unfortunately it will not trigger the uh, spectacle on Skewer the Critics because it will deal a damage on your opponent's turn. But uh, the two lines that are more important. Uh, whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast the spell, Roiling Vortex deals 5 damage to that player. Pay a red, your opponents can't gain life this turn. So, breaking this down, your opponent casts a spell, or a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, it deals 5 damage to that player. So, if you suspend a Rift Bolt and cast it, you're going to take 5 damage from your Roiling Vortex. Being upfront about that, you know, that's like the only drawback to this is that if you suspend a Rift Bolt after playing a Roiling Vortex. So, with that, you know, people playing like the pitch elementals, you know, you're playing against like Scam, you're playing against uh, Four Color in particular, which I believe is like the number one deck played in the format. Roiling Vortex is very good because if they try to like solitude your creatures. You know, because again, like your creatures do end up getting in a ton of damage, like Monastery Swift Spear. If you have this Roiling Vortex out, not only 
does it like your opponent like has two for one for themselves to get rid of your creature but you're also dealing like five damage to them in like you didn't necessarily spend a card like whirling vortex kind of like the creatures is this card that is going to do a variable amount of damage you know it, it could deal you know if your opponent has like a few upkeeps or whatever you know it's going to deal two three four damage over the course of a game two mana for four damage i mean is kind of like the the going rate the standard that you want because we have boros charm here if it'll come up that deals four damage to a player for two mana but you can do this at instant speed in certain matchups whirling vortex is probably your best burn spell for the fact of in in those certain matchups like elementals people that want to be playing you know solitude fury endurance uh grief things like that if you get this down early enough it's more punishing than what idol on the great revel was where there are some of these decks like uh murktide when that was like the popular deck that you want to play you know idol on the great revel because your opponent wanted to double spell every turn to get their connive triggers they wanted to get to delirium for their dragon rage channelers they wanted to you know eventually get to their merc ties but whatever and while merc tie didn't trigger it you know when they're casting you know two three four spells that's you know four six eight damage uh, so roiling vortex in that case uh, a little bit worse in you know certain matchups but in probably the most popular matchup and the one that you're very likely to run into you know it's very good and is very punishing to your opponent and is kind of something that people aren't familiar with roiling vortex like is a played card but it's not really played you know like a lot of the other cards from the burn deck so a lot of times like just getting to deal five damage to your opponent off the rip from playing this is going to be huge and you know that's 20 you know 25 percent of the way there which is really good another key piece that also helps in the same matchup you know people are trying to play omnath or like trying to have some sort of like life gain to kind of offset you know the ring and everything uh paying a red and your opponents can't gain life this turn this gives you something to do with some of your extra mana uh you are playing a decent amount of like instant speed like threats uh burn spells and stuff in Lightning Bolt, you have Boros Charm, Lightning Helix, Searing Blaze, you can technically play as, a, as an instant, you leave like a fetch land on crack, you can trigger the landfall on your opponent's turn, you have Skull Crack to also prevent life gain, and uh, stop damage from being prevented, you know, things like that, uh, even, I have Rift Bolt Sorcery, that's new, uh, but uh, you're able to kind of like keep up mana, like, you can stop your opponent from gaining life, your opponent leaves fetch lands on cracked with a omnath in play goes to your turn you know you can like pay a red in response to them fetching like you can kind of force them into scenarios where if they're not going to do things and you're able to kind of pressure the life total again by playing these instant speed burn spells and like forcing them to have to do something and then just getting to kind of like blow them out in a way with you know a, a trick of sorts that's face up on the table you know is going to be like really good for you and you know, Roiling Vortex is kind of like that X factor in those matchups where you're just kind of like stopping your opponent from, you know, any life gain that they can get so that you're not having to deal, you know, 24, 28, 32 points of damage. You're just having to do that 20 and your opponent doing some of the work because they're playing some of these like fetch land, you know, shock land, like mana bases and things like that. Uh, the rest of the list is pretty stock for the most part. You know, you have uh, 20 lands, uh, you have like these, uh, you have Bloodstained Myers and uh, uh, Wooded Foothills and things like that. Uh, no aired maces, but it's kind of crazy. I'm assuming this person either didn't have aired maces, but I guess there's also no reason because you just have like basic mountain and you're getting like sacred foundries for like your red mana and stuff. So kind of doesn't matter, but you know whatever it, it is what it is uh interesting to note uh there is some burn decks that are also playing the one ring now exactly what they're cutting i don't know but i think it's a lot easier to kind of beat the ring than it is to play the ring with this sort of deck so i would rather like keep the deck lean as it is now you know playing these one two mana like a super efficient burn spells with these one mana creatures that are just again really good on rate for how much damage they deal and like swift spear of course being probably uh one of your better ones if you have like these heavy spell draws which you're going to have playing you know four four spike four bowl and four critics essentially getting to play like 16 lightning bolts in your deck so that is a boros burn for modern and you know the uh kind of the evolution of, you know we we 
bring it up when we talk about it with certain decks how uh when you know we get to a certain point where you know we're wait we're essentially waiting for a new set to come out and how decks adopt you know and adapt to the meta game and like what cards they kind of pick up and everything and it looks like burn is uh trying to adapt to the presence of like omnath and like people trying to offset you know the one ring by you know gaining a ton of life and getting to keep it around and draw a bunch of cards you know it, I, you know stopping your opponent from gaining life necessarily doesn't mean that like well you know they're drawing still you know 6 10 15 cards with like the ring however if you can stop them from gaining the life and then force them to actually deal with the damage that's being dealt by their ring and everything and with how this deck can play kind of instant speed you can play around some of the protection stuff like from the ring you know burn doesn't necessarily feel like it's in a bad place you know it's going to feel bad when your opponent does kind of like get to do their thing you know where they just like play an omnath you don't see a rolling vortex you're not able to skull crack or anything like that or like they're still able to gain four life you know and they get a ring going and you're not able to kind of stop that well yeah like it feels bad but you know this is a way that this deck can fight back in those matchups and it has some you know has some utility in other matchups as well uh obviously because there is other decks that like want to play these elementals. There's other people that want to play, you know, like uh, Mishra's Bobble and things like that. And, you know, it's essentially like a free spell. Well, it is a free spell that obviously has a ton more value, which could be like its own video of, you know, how great Mishra's Bobble is and whatever. So, uh, yeah, like that is the Boros Burn deck. If you guys enjoyed the video, please uh, leave a uh, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Ring the notification bell so you know when videos like this and others get posted. There's uh, three links in the description down below, of course, uh, going to the deck itself. Uh, my Twitch channel, throw me a follow. I uh, get notified, notified when I go live on Twitch. And then the Discord server as well. So that's going to do it for me. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.